Hey guys, it's Kylie. Welcome back to my video, my channel. I don't know. I'm trying to get back into my reading wrap up videos and book videos because I love them. Here's the actual tea. I literally have the footage from what I read in January, but I sucked at like explaining stuff and I couldn't get through the video. So I was like, oh yeah, I'll refilm it. I still haven't done that. It's currently August right now, but we're going to go through what I read in July. Yeah, that's the month. Funny thing is I already filmed this but I sucked at explaining and I hated it. So we're gonna refilm this. Sad thing is, most of these, I do not have the paperbacks. But you know what, it's fine because we can still pop it up on the screen. First up, we have Shipped by Angie Hawkman. I finally got on the boat wagon and I read this. It has been on my radar for a very long time and I was like, oh yes, I really wanna read it. And then I saw it and I have Script, which is an audiobook, but then you also get books. You can get a lot of stuff from it, but I use the audiobooks part of it. And I saw it on there and I was like, yes. I'm starting to get very like proficient, kind of, yeah. Honed down on my ratings because I used to be like, oh yeah, you get a four, you get a three. But now I'm like, oh, you get knocked off because of this. I gave it a 4.59 out of five. Let me tell you what the book is about. It's about this girl, Henley. She works at a job and at the job, she has like a nemesis or whatever, arch nemesis, I don't know how you say it. And his name is Graham, Graham Cracker Collins. Just kidding, it's Graham Crawford Collins, but in the book, she calls him Graham Cracker. <laughs> he's remote, she's never seen him in person, but he's just, he's always there. And they have like these epic email battles, literally like it says it in the summary. Her boss is like, you two are up for a promotion. The catch is that you guys have to go on one of our cruises because they work for a cruise line. And I think Graham's like the social media person. Henley, the marketing manager. And she's like, oh great, now I finally get to meet Graham Crawford. And she doesn't really like cruises. And then she also is taking college classes. Oh, I really don't want to do this, but she has to do it for the promotion. So that's basically what it is. Let's go over what I said. The book, Sally, is not dull POV. It's Justin Henley's, but it was fine. In the beginning, it felt a little slow and I wasn't that intrigued. And then I said I didn't get really interested in it until like 10 to 15% in the book. And I was like, okay, yes. And I kept on reading and reading and reading. And then I didn't like Walsh. She's the sister of Henley. And in the beginning, I hated her. I was like, why are you here? I literally said she gives off immature vibes and seems like that character just there to be annoying. And then it made it worse where, spoiler alert, but kind of not like it's not really a big spoiler alert, but she went on the cruise with them too. And I was like, really? Why? And I said in the middle, I still don't like her. Because she like, she redeemed herself and then she didn't. She redeemed herself and then she screwed it up and then she redeemed herself and it was done with that. I don't like how Graham had, he admitted his feelings like halfway through the book. And I was like, yo, what? It wasn't like a big deal, but I was kind of like, what? And the narrator's voice for Graham was so good. They had like a little argument, like fight thing and I hated it and I thought that it was very stupid. And then I said, I get why Henley felt that way, but I felt like it was a little, excuse me. But I felt like it was a little over dramatic, and that's like the only thing that I didn't like. I'm editing this, and I have no idea why I didn't re say this. But the reason why I boosted the score up a little bit was because, in like her author's note thing, whatever, literally said that she went on a trip exactly like what they went on for the cruise, and they went to the Galapagos. And the key factor in here is that she helped the Galapagos finches and did something like really environmentally safe for them. So in her author's note, she said to like choose cruises that are environmentally like sustainable, safe, blah, 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 all that stuff is like good for the environment. So I really love that aspect of the book. That's it. Next up, we have Mr. Malcolm's List and I actually have the paperback. This is actually turned into a movie I think it came out July 1st, so I was already going to read it like I had it before. And on the side, it said soon to be a major motion picture, but like, you know how like they have those little tables that's like soon to be a picture like read before it. I was like, oh yeah, like I'll pick it up, but I don't see like in a trailer. I don't know when the movie's coming out. Like I don't know what's happening about it. And I literally found it like the clearance and I was like, slay. And what really got me was because on the back it said, move over Mr. Darcy, there's a new man in town. I was like, I love Pride and Prejudice. So I was like, yes. And then I saw like the trailer for it came out. I was like, oh. so I did watch the trailer before 
I read it. I gave this a 3.79 out of 5. Here's why. It was in third POV, which I'm like, oh. What I kind of did like about it was how Pride and Prejudice is written is, it's a classic and it's written in the 1800s, it was like published and stuff. But with them, the author tried to like do that, but it was easier to like follow. Like she tried to give it old English, but it was way easier to follow, which I really liked about it. But I just felt like it was too much trying to be Pride and Prejudice. I don't know, I got that vibe. It might have just been me. That's what it is. It's called Mr. Malcolm's List because Mr. Malcolm right here, he has a list of what his wife needs to be. Amy on even temper, graceful and well-mannered, a forgiving nature, conversant sensible fashion, educated herself by sense of reading, has genteel relations from good society. Like all this stuff that's like, why would, why do you care about that? This is Selena, okay? But Julia is her friend and she invites her to London because Julia first went on a date with him to the opera, but he never called back. Julia has this cousin Colin who's best friends with him. And Colin asks, like, why didn't you, like, call her back? She didn't require the stuff from my list. He's like, you have a list. Why do you have a list? They tell Julie about the list, and she's like, oh, I didn't make it on a list. So then she gets this grand idea to have Selena come over, make Mr. Malcolm fall for her because they know what's on the list, and have her tick off every single thing, and then at the end be like, oh, I have a list too, and you didn't make it. So then he'll feel like how Julia felt. That's basically the premise of the book. I said that it was a little bit slow, but once it like picks off, it picked off like halfway through and I was like, okay, yes, like let's go. It didn't give me the, oh, like I need to keep reading to figure out what happens. I said that I kind of forgot about it. Like I took a little bit of a break. I took a break for like two days because I totally honestly forgot about it. And I was like, oh, I kind of want to read this other book, but I was like, oh no, I can't, like I have to finish it. And it wasn't really that interesting to me. Next up, we have Faking with Benefits by Lily Gold. I gave this a 3.89 out to 5. It's about this girl, Layla Thompson. She has been on a lot of dates, and I think she counted. I think she said that she's been on 200 and something dates, and she's 28, and she's never had a boyfriend. She has this whole timeline, and she's like, I need to be here, and I'm not here. Am I just undateable? Like, what's the tea? Okay, she has these neighbors. One's a rugby player, and then one is the boy next door. And then the other one is actually her old professor. And they all have this relationship podcast. The first night after her date, she goes over there and she's like talking about it and she like starts crying. They've never seen her cry. So they're like, oh my gosh, like this is like really upsetting her. They feel really bad for her. So like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We are going to be your fake boyfriends. Okay. For us to like do that and train you. And it would be like a little experiment for a podcast because their views are going down because they have a rival podcast. So they're like, oh, like two birds with one stone. But that's basically how it started. What I loved about it is that you can see the podcast. They had like a chapter like and you could read it and it was so funny. I was loving it. And I was like, I want this to be like an actual podcast. Like this is so funny. It's dual POV. Um, this is a spoiler alert for how it ends. So if you don't want to hear it, go to here. I said not every book has to end in a wedding because this one did. And I was like, Bro, it was six or eight months later. I was like, why did you have to get married? You could have just ended it. I said, I don't like how quickly they got over the issue, whatever, like the little fight, argument thing, whatever happened that was like in the book, they got like really fast past it. And I was like, okay, maybe that's just me. I felt like it was very rushed and I felt like it was freakishly long for all the stuff that happened. It could have been shorter, but I really cannot remember if there was any details that were like really stupid in it. That's what... I said about that book. I truly really can't remember it. So next book I read was Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. It's the last book in the Twisted series. I'm pretty positive. I rated it a 4.89 out of 5. I loved it so much. And there's four books in the series and it's about four girl best friends. So I sucked at telling you guys about what the other books in the series are about. So I'm going to do it right now. And this is how I figured it out. I don't really think it's a big flat flat it's a big fat spoiler alert the first book is about ava which is one of the girl best friends of course she also has a brother that's in the series too josh which is her brother has a boy best friend and it's about them too okay second book is about bridget she's also a princess but in that book she's getting ready to take the crown because her grandfather got sick so she's like oh i need to step in and then rise I think it's Rise. I always say that because like I say Ryzen from Echo Tar, but it's Resand. But I don't like saying Resand because I think it's stupid. So I say it Rise. It's R-H-Y-S. And he's her bodyguard. So it's about that one. And then the next one is about Jules, one of the girl best friends too. And then Josh, which is 
Ava's brother. And then the last one was about Stella and Christian. Stella was one of the girl best friends, of course. And then Christian is how it's connected is that he has a company, Harper Security, and he got Rise his job for being Bridget's bodyguard. And that's how everybody's connected. First one was brother's best friend. Second one was bodyguard. Third one was best friend's brother. And the last one was fake dating. Stella is, I love when books and TV shows and movies have this about like influencers and stuff. I love when it has like anything like social media or influencers. So she's an influencer and he actually owns an apartment. So she lives at his apartment. Okay. She has like this little issue in the book that previously happened. I don't know if it previously said it or anything, but she has a little issue and he like comes and like helps her and it starts like fake dating. Yeah, that's like the premise. Is it like fake dating? I don't know what else to say. It's dual POV, which I loved that because Christian, you really can't tell his emotions. I said I want to give it five stars, but I'm very like diligent with them. I don't even know if that's the right word to use. I absolutely loved it. I binged read it and I stayed up all night reading it. My favorite in the series. I loved that there was so much tension and interaction. And I said I was obsessed with it, so. Next, I read Something Wilder by Christina Lauren, and I gave it a 4.27 out of 5. This book, this book was a lot. It really was. In the beginning, I, some of these books I just go in, I'm like, I don't even know what it's about, but like a lot of people like rave about them. And that's exactly what I did with this one. I just went in blind. In the prologue, I was like, okay, okay, I'm like understanding. And then it goes into it, I was like, what? It's about this girl, Lily Wilder. Her dad is famous for like his treasure hunting but he dies duke he sold the ranch that they used to live at so Lily has this great idea oh i can actually turn in his like treasures or whatever in the trails into a business and that's what she did she thinks that like duke never found any treasure or whatever leo her, like ex lover whatever which you read about in the prologue which is what i was really confused about he has this little bachelor trip i think is what it is nobody knows where they're going except for the bachelor dude person i don't know he goes there and he's like oh my gosh it's lily he's like trying to make it all good and whatever she's like no i don't want to talk to you i don't want to be friends I don't even want to think about it or whatever. But he's like freakishly smart. So every single clue he like solves. Which it was really hard on my feelings. But something happened. A lot of stuff happened in this book. And they have to like get together and like work this out and stuff. This was in third POV. And I said it was good at first. And I was very interested to see how things would play out for Leo and Lily. And then it took a huge turn. And I was like okay now we're on this whole different story plot line. And I was enjoying it. Then it took another turn. And I was like, it wasn't that big. Okay, that's fine. But like my adrenaline like started rushing a little. And then it took a big turn, like a P-H-A-T fat turn. And I was like, holy crap, what's going to happen now? Like I couldn't stop reading after it took the first turn. Because as they're still doing this, as all the turns are taking, they're still trying to find the treasure. And then I got over the fat turn. Then it took another turn. Great, love it. And then I said, how many turns can you put into a book? But it, w it was good. Plot twist kind of got a little bit boring. But... It made me int more interested to read it and keep on reading it. So I really like that aspect of it. Next, I started the... I don't think she has a name for it. It's just like Adrian X. Easeld series or whatever. The next book is coming out in December. I'm pretty positive. But it's King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. And I give it a 4.98 out of 5. I loved this book so much. It was so good. It had like everything perfect in it. So thank you, Kaylee, for actually getting me on this book. Because I really, really really loved it and i totally would have gave it a five stars but i was like yeah i don't even know if i've ever actually given a book five stars not that i'm thinking about it but this this one came really close basically isold her father is like the king of this place it's a fantasy book okay so it's really hard to like explain there's this dude named adrian he's a vampire king okay and he wants to take over their little place, town, country, I don't know what even what you would call it. He wants to take over, but the king's like, like, I really don't want any bloodshed happening. I don't want a war. Let's just talk this out. So he's going to come over and talk to the king. But actually, before that, Miss Isolde, she loves adventure. She loves to be adventurous. She goes out, and she actually gets, like, scratched or something by an animal, and it hurts really badly. Okay, she meets Adrian. She doesn't know that it's Adrian, okay? She's like, who are you? She's like, oh my gosh, she's so cute. Like, who are you? He never answers. But then he like, he heals her. And she's like, thank you. But like, who are you? She's like, okay, um, I should go. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. Bye. Okay. Next day, they're gonna have their little meeting. 
So she's there. She's vibing with the king. Vampire King comes in. She's like, no, it's you? What? What? If I could reread it again, I would do it. Like, I stayed up all night reading it. He comes in. They're, like, talking. And he gets this idea. He's like, I can make a deal with you, okay? I won't harm anybody in your little kingdom or whatever. So, okay, girl. What's the deal? He goes, I'm gonna marry your daughter. I was like, ah. and King's like, uh uh, uh uh, you you ain't taking my daughter. Like, no, 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 no. He's like, Dad, come on, chill out. It's fine. I can take her myself, okay? I don't want anybody to die. I don't want any bloodshed. I don't want a war. It's okay. It's good. It's fine. I'll marry him. Funny thing is, is he doesn't want to marry. So she's like, Why do you want to marry? He's like, I didn't want to marry anybody until last night. Which is when they met. I was like, slay i loved it it was so good please read it i'm mad that it's not dual pov it's just an esol's point of view but it made up for it because adrian like you could totally tell what he was thinking and he was like you could tell from his emotions and his actions like he was very expressive and then it took a twist at the end it was like a it wasn't a plot twist but it kind of was like it was a good one but it's just like what the freak next we have the hardest fall by ella mays i give this a 4.59 out of 5 it was a really good book i loved it it was super cute it felt like a sarah adams book just a little bit more you know zoe goes into the bathroom and she finds dylan she's like oh hi um didn't know you came into the bathroom but that's great i want to have like a proposition with you my friends dared me to like kiss you yeah, your nay, tell me the tea. Because I have a girlfriend. She's like, oh, okay, that's like, that's so great. Like, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, blah, blah, blah. Because they like, they dared her to do it and she didn't know anything. And then she like starts like crying, but it doesn't like fully like say that she started crying. Like in Dylan's POV, you could see that he's like, oh my gosh, like I could see like tears like starting to like come up in her face because Dylan has a sister and he knows things. So then he like tries to tell her to come back, but she doesn't come back. They keep on running into each other in their campus. Zoe tries her hardest not to let it happen. But you know, sometimes it just happens, okay? They can't stop running into each other because Zoe lives at this apartment. Dylan got in this fight with this one of the players because of something that happened. So the coach is like, dude, I know that you're like struggling to find an apartment right now. I know money is hard for you. He works, but any like extra money he gets, he sends it home. I have this extra apartment. Zoe is actually at this apartment and you'll figure out why in the book. And I was like, what? She's at this apartment. He's like, why are you like, but she never told him like why she's at the apartment over, but they're living at the apartment together. And I was like, oh. so that's basically the premise of it. So POV, I said it was so cute. I loved it. I said the main girl was a little bit too quirky, but at the same time, I really related to her a lot. So maybe that's why, but it felt like a little bit too much. Well, I said, I hate one of the characters in it with a burning passion and you'll figure out who it is when you read it and why. And I was like, like, who does he think he is? You like go away go kill yourself literally nobody wants you nobody cares for you and i said the ending was so cute and sweet and i really liked the book ella mays did it again okay next up we have book lovers by emily henry i gave it a 4.7 out of 5. i love emily henry so much it's basically about miss nora stephan stevens she is a literary agent. In the beginning, she goes on a meeting with little dude Charlie right here. He's a book editor. He goes on these little meetings and she tries to find her clients, editors. He seems really put off. He's really angry and he's very like broody and moody and all. So she's like, wow, this is like amazing. Like, love this. Fast forward two years, there's this book one of her clients did and it's based in an actual town. And that's what she was trying to sell to Charlie. So her sister is like, Nora, your whole life is work. You literally do not have anything else. Come with me. Let's go on a vacation. She also is noticing that her sister seems off a little bit. So she was like, okay, I guess like I'll go on this vacation only for her. She makes out this whole list for Nora to do. While they're at this place, I think it's Sunshine Falls. She's at this one restaurant, cafe or whatever. Guess who she sees? Charlie. Charlie's there too. Plot twist, Charlie actually lives there. So she keeps on running into him, bopping into him, blah, blah, blah. That's how like the story starts. And I said that I was living for the beginning slash prologue of when they met. I was like, yes, lay. And then I love the aspect because they're book editors. They were talking about unrealistic stuff about books, but it was literally in this book. Like it was very ironic to me, but it felt a little bit slow. Towards the end, there was this one quote that I actually highlighted and I loved it so much. And I actually cried because of it. I literally cried. Yeah, if you don't want a spoiler, skip to this part, but I'm gonna show you the quote that I highlighted. 
yeah broke me into tears okay next we have pride and prejudice by jane austen you're gonna see why i read this later on but i've been meaning to read because i've seen the movie a thousand times i love 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 it okay so i was like you know what i finally need to read the book um i really don't know how to explain it it's a classic of course it's by miss jane austen it kind of is a little bit hard to follow along because it is old english that's the only thing about it but love pride and prejudice next up i read from blood and ash by jennifer l armantrout i joined the bandwagon about this book i gave it 4.79 out of 5. i really enjoyed it i kept on wanting to read it and read it and read it i didn't know actually what it was about at all the only reason i started reading it was because i was on kaylee's kindle and i was like looking through it she had from blood and ash I was like okay cool like let me just click on it like see where she's at or whatever she was actually at chapter one i was like okay this is like a sign like and then i started reading and i was like yes and i had the audiobook for it so i was like yes about this girl poppy she's a maiden she was chosen to be the maiden but she doesn't know what that is she really doesn't know what her life is like i don't know anything that's happening she's in a cage basically they tell her when to eat what to do she has to have a mask on and you'll figure out why sorry guys my other battery died and nobody like lets her do anything so it starts off and she goes to the red pearl because she has these night terrors so she needs to walk around and she can't sleep very well so then she goes in the red pearl because most people like talk about it so she's like oh like what is this anyway she meets this dude hawk stuff lisa stuff blah 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 she goes back to little palace kingdom whatever it's called she knows who the dude is because she saw him and she's seen him trade and he's like a royal guard or whatever something happens to her personal guard so then hawk like steps in and is her guard now and she's like oh my gosh like this is so great like hopefully he doesn't know who i am and then stuff happens she starts like getting these feelings and she's like i'm not supposed to have these feelings i'm not supposed to like anybody but i can't especially like him because he's a personal guard like nothing can happen but you know lines blur blah 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 there's a plot twist at the end which i even i knew what it was because i could tell if you've read it you could probably tell so i said i love the banter and back and forth between hawk and poppy they had a lot of interactions i really liked it because i didn't like usually you would like oh like i don't care about this little section where they're not talking like nobody knows anything come on like let's get going no nothing like that happened and it might happen for you but it didn't happen for me finally got to the part where like hawk was a guard i was like yes and i said this is wow plot twist jk i know who he was and i felt like it was him the whole time i want to give it five stars but like can i you know like ugh. it's teetering on five stars but then i really liked my stuff and i was like wait let me think about this like yeah and then i read the second book which is a kingdom of flesh and fire and i read that the same thing a 4.79 out of 5 it was really good i don't know what else to say because i can't really say anything about it without like spoiling what happened there's supposed to be six books but there's currently only four out right now. And I don't know when the fifth and sixth one are supposed to be out. That's all the books that I read for July. I hope you guys enjoyed this little reading wrap up. Comment down below what you want me to do for my next video. And comment down below if you like these reading wrap ups and book videos and stuff like that. Subscribe and turn your post notifications to get notified every single time I post a video because I bet you guys don't want to miss it. Follow me on all my social medias. They're on the screen as well as linked below. And as well as with that, I have my book wishlist link. So if you want to send me a book that you really like and you want me to review it or you want me to read it, you can do that. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed. And I think that is it. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Love y'all. Also, let me tell you, I did get my hair dyed. I got balayage, which you really can't like see it, but I, you can really see like the money pieces. I decided to tell you guys because I didn't address it. And then also in the last video, at the end, I was like, should I go darker? And I went lighter, you know, really funny. That's it. Peace out.